Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. We are just uh, beginning to end this afternoon and our next speaker is Eric Manson, coach, consultant and lecturer. He uh, will present uh, the next keynote for this international seminar on project management. Eric, your turn. Thank you, and I'm happy to be here for this virtual conference. It's a new experience for all of us, and I think it's a very important experience. Although it's better to meet in person, we need to uh, upscale our abilities to meet virtually as well, because this will be part of the future. Uh, uh, I don't have the permission to use the controls to change slide. Uh, how can I change slide? Next slide. Can someone help me to change slide? I'm not able to do that myself. Yeah. Ah, now it works. Okay. Uh, I do a very brief introduction because uh, we started late and I aim to finish on time and, and quality. So I just want to highlight I've been working with IPMA uh, uh, this the last 20 years and my main focus has been on product excellence. Uh, uh, since uh, January this year I took up a, a full-time position as a lecturer in Sweden for a master degree in product management and I um, mainly teach or I only teach uh, distance or I can teach from my main home in Frankfurt, Germany or from my second home in, in France in Champagne where I'm actually situated for the moment. Uh, Mindshift is a company I, um, I uh, built up in, in 2009 and uh, I think today uh, there is a big need for this shift of our mindset to cope with uh, all the challenges we have. And why is the topic of a uh, product excellence baseline and using this to improve products so important? I think this picture says it all that for the last 30 years I've been involved in product management. We are still uh, failing most of our products. So only one third of our products are successful delivering in time, budget and quality according to the product objectives. And even worse, if we look to the benefits realization, only one out of nine products are successful there. So this is the gap I want to address. Uh, these two thirds of unsuccessful products regarding uh, delivering in time, budget and quality and eight of nine not achieving the full benefits realization. And if we compare this with the value of products in the economy, 35% of our GDP, so there is an enormous waste that uh, we should do better. And how could we do better? I want to give you some answers uh, on this in the following minutes. And I will base myself on the five, uh, experience we have done in Sweden during the last five years to use the IPMA Product Excellence Baseline uh, actively to improve ongoing products and programs. So the purpose of this uh, exercise is enable products to uh, create as much stakeholder satisfaction for as many stakeholders as possible in a sustainable way, which means including also future generation and the environment. So the main value of the Product Excellence Baseline is about sustainability and being able to focus on uh, continuous improvement and learning to achieve sustainable uh, product results. Our vision also is to uh, engage not only uh, stakeholders in, in Sweden but uh, to build an IPMA international, international network to exchange experience to uh, advance and evolve our profession and especially being able to cope with a VUCA world, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity that uh, 
is very much present and it becomes uh, even worse uh, uh, in the last few months. And so uh, I will just uh, give you a few uh, insights on the Project Excellence Baseline, how it is uh, uh, how it's built up. I will not go into the uh, IPMA organizational competence baseline today. So this is also part of improving uh, projects that we also look at the project governance. But uh, as of today, this is outside of scope. However, we believe in Sweden that uh, uh, the next step will be increased focus on product governance as an indirect enabler for product excellence. But the scope of today, product excellence uh, baseline, and it consists of three areas. The, the main area is uh, uh, people and purpose. That's the foundation of our excellence. Uh, it used to be processes and resources, but now we see this as secondary. That's a reinforcement of excellence. But without clear purpose and uh, uh, people that can work together and achieve, uh, uh, there is no possibility to, to uh, excel in products. Then the third part of the model is about product results and stakeholder satisfaction. And uh, my view of this uh, model is that actually this third part should be much bigger than the previous parts, the, the product management parts. Because uh, <clears throat> about achieving as much product results and stakeholder satisfaction as possible with as lim limited uh, product management intervention as possible. So that's never self-purpose with the uh, product management processes and so on, but just as much as it takes to get to excellence. And how do we, we achieve this? <clears throat> so at the origin, I was busy many years with uh, assessing uh, uh, products for the IPMA Product Excellence Awards. So it's a yearly award for the best products in the world. So Finnish products that are compared regardless of, uh, of industry and uh, they are compared using this product excellence baseline. So I'm still uh, involved in that exercise and, and this is useful to get international benchmarks and compare. But however, in the national context, uh, this model is, is too complex to be used uh, and it's also not necessary. It takes a lot of resources and time. Uh, so for a full assessment, which is called here step five, the product excellence assessment, you go through 20 criteria of the model and ask 10 to 15 questions each. So 200 to, three, two to 300 questions to cover and really properly understand how excellent the product is to be able to properly benchmark and, and to be able to tell what is the best product in the world in, in a given category. And then you also do a scoring uh, with a product team, normally a team of five assessors on site for several days, and you score each of the criteria zero to 100%. However, <clears throat> when we started to introduce this in Sweden five years ago, we noticed that uh, there, were very <clears throat> there was very little appetite uh, uh, because <clears throat> products want to have results very quickly. So we try to simplify and simplify and simplify as much as possible. So from two to 300 questions, we ended up with only 15 questions, the 15 most important question. And we spent actually three to four years uh, <clears throat> just focusing on these first few questions, the 15 questions, because they were so essential. And we noticed that, that most products had a lot to improve uh, in this, and it was a lot around uh, product leadership, uh, people management, uh, than uh, customer satisfaction and, uh, and uh, uh, product management uh, uh, processes. And then also for the scoring, <clears throat> it's not necessary to do a scoring from 0 to 100% because you, it takes a lot of time <clears throat> to learn this type of scoring and uh, it also can give a false uh, idea of, of uh, how well you assess the product. So we have simplified it to just use the traffic light, light approach. Uh, uh, and if products are green, then they are on the road to succeed is one third of products. Uh, but most of our products are either on, on yellow or red. And this is the area where we want to, to help them and to, to be able to tell them exactly where are the improvement areas and uh, what to do about it. And once they have 
clear the first step, the first 15 questions, then they're ready to ask an additional 15 question in other areas and move on uh, like this. So after the third round, all the areas of the model have been covered through 60 questions. But uh, also in, in contrast to uh, an IPMA uh, uh, award assessment, uh, the assessment is very light and it's more a coaching support tool than an assessment control instrument. And this has been found a key success factor because uh, if you approach products and organization and want to assess them or audit them, uh, they are very defensive. Whereas if you want to help them, to coach them to, to get better, you are in a much better position to get a buy-in. So <clears throat> just to show you the scope again, uh, how it's limited from other IPMA services. So here we focus uh, today only on the product excellence baseline and what we call product excellence preparation, uh, prepare products for success. In the second step, you can add also uh, product governance preparation based on the IPMA uh, organization competence baseline. And, but the scope is always just a single product, whereas the OCB is normally covering all products and programs and portfolios of an organization. So we, we tend to <clears throat> decrease scope as much as possible. But today the scope is only uh, the product excellence baseline and, and how we use that. I want to show you, share with you the case of the Swedish Transport Agency. So that's a state-owned organization, about 10,000 employees, and that's the organization that uh, is doing the biggest volume of projects in, in uh, Sweden in terms of, uh, of uh, investments. So they do all the big infrastructure investments for rail and road. Uh, uh, so we have a number of massive uh, uh, projects ongoing and programs ongoing all the time. And, when they started to get into product excellence uh, in 2016, and uh, it took some years before it really took off, uh, and this was the last few years from 2018 and onwards, uh, where they started to cooperate with other organizations in Sweden and exchange experience and helped each other to simplify this uh, assessment model from uh, IPMA to make it as simple uh, as possible and adapting it for their own organization. And currently uh, they have in the traffic authority uh, uh, six uh, uh, assessors in a core team and uh, they are piloting this with 10 products in parallel. So what kind of adaptation have they done? I told you before <clears throat> that we started by uh, adapting from scoring in zero to 100 percent to traffic light approach uh, the traffic agency went even further so they, <clears throat> they noticed that uh, to get yellow and, and red scoring within the agency was a no-go this is a very strong signal of uh, non-performance and uh, uh, in order to motivate the people and not discourage them they preferred to change the scoring to a six shades of green instead. So nothing has changed the, uh, how you interpret it. It's just that it appears more attractive and, uh, and uh, more positive to build on. Furthermore, regarding the questions, so all the questions are taken from the model itself, but they are simplified and they're also provided with example from their own organization. So what are uh, the the likely answers you could expect uh, for each question. Because this was a major hurdle in the beginning, that the questions were very open and, and the product managers working with this model did not understand really how does this apply to my environment if I'm an IT product or infrastructure product uh, within the, the traffic agency. So this has been uh, provided uh, with example and, and uh, to lower the threshold as much as possible. The traffic authority also <clears throat> uses an online service, so in just a few hours uh, with 60 questions that cover all uh, of the model's area and can get a very quick analysis of any product and they send out this service to a number of uh, 
of people at, in different functions within the product, uh, outside the product, in, in different roles. And, and they use this ahead of audit as well to get a temperature check of where the product are and using the systematic benefiting from the systematic approach of the product excellence baseline. So just to sum up the expectation and uh, some of the uh, the learnings of the traffic agency and expectations for the, the future. So they now introduce more and more uh, product managers to go through all these steps, starting with step one, the first few questions, and then uh, after a while they move on to a deeper and deeper level of, of the model. Uh, but first, the main thing is to take care of all improvement uh, uh, areas before moving further. And they also <coughs> want this to become the standard uh, model to use uh, for the, the large infrastructure uh, products and that mm, they need to go through this uh, product excellence analysis before uh, this toll gate 2 decision. So um, going forward, uh, um, they uh, also want to add uh, the analysis of the product governance for this the specific products they are working on, but uh, this is still not up and running. It's piloted in another agency that will come to later. And last but not least, they have also an, an ambitious uh, objective <coughs> to go for the IPMA award in, uh, in 2025 when uh, IPMA Sweden will host the IPMA World Congress. And the ambition of the traffic agency to, is to win at least one medal in this competition. So it's many years in the preparation, but it takes time and big organization to increase the, the product maturity. So uh, how do we work with this experience exchange in, in practice? Uh, because what we found out, it's about developing all the time tools and templates, uh, sharing know-how, both nationally and internationally, to be more adapted to the reality. And the two main uh, counterparts in Sweden has been the traffic agency, as I mentioned, but also Vattenfall, which is a state and energy provider um, into <coughs> wind power, uh, hydropower, nuclear power, uh, and uh, they also have branches in uh, in uh, Germany, Holland, Denmark, and uh, in the UK. And these two agencies have been working in tandem, uh, developing experience, uh, uh, and as they're both state-owned companies, they can also share assessors between each other without a problem, and there's no, no problem with confidentiality or competition and so on. But and they are also uh, willing and, and able to share uh, with other organizations, both both private and uh, and public. So for the time being, uh, uh, Vattenfall <coughs> has an exchange with uh, an Icelandic energy company called uh, Landsverken, and <coughs> they already <coughs> um, achieved a, a, a product excellence award last year in uh, in Mexico in the World Cong Congress in Mexico, uh, and uh, they got encouraged to work more systematically to prepare also future ongoing products uh, according to this principle because they are, they are very enthusiastic about the model and the potential of itself and they, they also want to have access to, to these tools and templates and there is a sharing going on uh, between Sweden and Iceland on this. Then <clears throat> the traffic agency has just initiated a, a cooperation with the Transport Scotland, so similar organization taking care of uh, uh, rail and road uh, infrastructure in, in Scotland, where they also um, <coughs> share the experiences. And uh, as I'm also a teacher at Schema Business School in Paris, so some of my students uh, have this as a master degree thesis to study this experience exchange uh, to see to what extent uh, this know how uh, templates and tools are transferable from one organization to another. So we believe they are, and uh, the, the first uh, steps have been very positive, but uh, this is ongoing work uh, as we speak, and uh, the thesis uh, and the product will be completed uh, in a couple of months' time, and then uh, hopefully also Transport Scotland will, will go down this road. 
So <clears throat> I want to, to finish by encourage you, uh, any of you who are interested in this, to, to make contact uh, with us and, and uh, the agencies and organizations in, in Sweden working with this are uh, willing and, and uh, help other organizations uh, within the IPMA <clears throat> friendly to, to uh, help everyone to improve the products and, and contribute to a better product world. Uh, so <clears throat> maybe at the end uh, I have time for one or two questions before I leave the floor to the IPMA president who will follow me. Eric, thank you very much for this presentation. And time is perfect. Okay, if anyone has any questions, I, I ask you to raise your hand like this. So someone can give you a microphone virtually, of course, and you can ask your questions. I can see you, Salvador, two seconds. Okay, now you have the microphone. Thank you, Andrea. Sorry. First of all, I would like to thank Eric Manson for accepting our, our invitation to be here. He is one of the biggest experts in the third IPMA standard, the PEB, but recently has been translated to Spanish. And by the way, it is uh, in the Spanish version in the virtual backpack the conference as a gift of the Spanish Association of Project Management. Uh, Eric, thank you for your clear explanation of the arranging process to use an exposed assessment tool in an operative tool. And my question is, how is it possible to combine a PMO, PMO support type or a template process approach uh, with the simplified PEB? That is to say, uh, in which moment, when, when can we use uh, the process approach and when is the moment to use the questions to reorient the project steering wheel? Thank you. So, <clears throat> actually, uh, we can make available already now the English version, as this is what we have uh, used for Transport Scotland. Uh, so, you can already get access to the tools and templates in English. and. Uh, then uh, on the basis of your translation of the, the PB, uh, you can, uh, it's simple, I think, for you to translate it into Spanish if you want afterwards. Okay, thank you, thank you again for your generosity. I would like that you make a, a recording recommendation about the possibility of starting to use the question or starting to use a traditional uh, waterfall approach and in which moment we stop and we make the, this control, this uh, revision process, uh, which frequency do you recommend? Uh, 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 you can use it for any type of uh, project, uh, agile, waterfall, uh, uh, hybrid, uh, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the recommendation is to, for every project, even the small ones, to do the first step, the 15 question always, and, and do it early in the project. Then for the, the medium uh, to large uh, project, uh, we recommend <clears throat> to do uh, uh, three times, so one time in the beginning, one time in the middle, and one time at, towards the end of the project, because uh, in that way <clears throat> you can benefit from the improvements uh, early on, and this can help guide you towards success. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Eric. Yes, I can see Guillermo. Seconds, please. Now you have the microphone, Guillermo. You can you can ask your question, Guillermo. Yes. Uh, hear me? Yes. 
Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. I follow your works. Uh, I will ask you why you choose the first five criteria of model. Why this one and no, uh, not another ones? <clears throat> yeah, that's a very good uh, <clears throat> question, and, and it's based uh, on the logic of the model. We, we say that people and, and purpose are the, is the most important uh, element, so nine questions are related to a people and purpose. Then regarding processes, we have three questions, and, and uh, the focus on processes are on product management uh, processes, not on other processes. And finally, regarding the uh, stakeholder satisfaction and result, uh, among all stakeholders, uh, uh, we consider the customer to be the main stakeholder. So this is why it's so important early on to understand uh, how well you score towards the the, the customer, and if you do that well, uh, uh, it goes <coughs> follows that you can also manage other stakeholders, but you can never uh, uh, do <coughs> do uh, too much for the, the customer, so that's why we start with the customer.